Bruno Gimaris transfer to Arsenal looks like it's inevitable and Arsenal are really drawing out a plan to say to it that they obviously get in this player. Their previous plan was to bring in a player like Douglas Lewis for £105 million and then go in for another player like for £70 million and then look out for another player like for £40-50 million. Pounds. But looks like Ateta has got him to know that he needs to reinforce his side to the fullest. With Thomas Partey leaving the club of Arsenal, with Elneny leaving the club of Arsenal, he looks like Mikel Ateta and Edu wants to get in Bruno Gimares and Douglas Luiz at the club of Arsenal to obviously strengthen that midfield and obviously increase the competition into that team because if you're having Declan Rice, Douglas Luiz and Bruno Gimares, that means you're going to be pushing those players every time they show up on the field of play, they'll be really showing it to the fullest and it looks like it will be a midfield of either Declan Rice, Douglas Lewis and Odegaard or Bruno Gimares, Declan Rice and Odegaard or Bruno Gimares, um, Bruno Gimares, Douglas Lewis and um, Bruno Gimares, Douglas Lewis and um, what's the name of this guy? Bruno Gimares, <coughs> Douglas Lewis and Martin Odegaard looks like that's gonna be the midfield combination and one will be asking Rokani what is the cause or what's why should Arsenal bring in Bruno Gimares and Douglas Lewis I tell you imagine a Declan Rice out of the team of Arsenal for three months that is the huge question so all you need to do is you need to have a very good reinforced side if I tell you the strongest side of Man City I've ever gone here to see it had it had Yaya Toure it had Fabinho, it had Kevin De Bruyne, it had David Silva. Um, there is another midfielder they really had, you know. They had six quality midfielders that could obviously come out and obviously show that even Ika Gundogan was there. So he had three pair, sorry, two pairs of three, you know. Three, three. He had pairs. He had three sets. All he had two sets of three midfielders that if you get out, Yaya Toure, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, and David Silva. You could obviously get in Fernandinho, Ika Gundogan, and which other midfielder was there. <clears throat> there was another midfielder. So I think that's the blueprint that Mikel Ateta is obviously looking to obviously build. And in the last video I brought you about Kai Havertz, we saw to it that the manager of Brighton came out <clears throat> and really went hard at the... Aston Villa manager that is Unai Emery that they never showed up to the occasion and they never understood the assignment now the manager of Aston Villa has gone ahead to retaliate and sorry to react or respond and even Douglas Lewis has gone ahead and obviously had something to say about that loss that Aston Villa went ahead to get yesterday Aston Villa just looking for one role for one win to see to it that they go to that level of being into the of being into the what is it called of being into the champions league bracket <clears throat> confirmed and sealed but they expected to get that win away at amnex stadium they failed so we thank god for the gift of life <clears throat> rock and david is my name don't forget to subscribe because you want to hit 21,000 subscribers before the end of this day today let's hit that magic number here onto the arsenal onto the Rokani media football i'm sorry it's not the arsenal news show it's the football news show because there are some other stories though the little stories coming in from arsenal but you're really having more 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 other stories to come in through and lead the way now <clears throat> the muslims barak and let's see and let's see close to 400 likes much on this video to see to it that we call it a day third video of the day and hope you people are really chai now for us not to facilitate the transfer plan or the transfer price all activation of the man himself that is bruno Gimares, they've gone ahead to come up with a plan of selling three players all are academy all hell and <clears throat> graduates and this is peter oruk who has gone ahead obviously coming through from the foot insider he has told us that arsenal are willing to sell race nelson emily smith rowey and edin ketia this summer to fund a move for newcastle united sub bruno Gimares. all three players are now surplus to requirement 
at the Emirates Stadium as Mikel Arteta looks to transform the Gunners into a force in European football. The Premier League title rivals can land the Brazilian international to his release clause of £100 million, but it's only valid until the end of June. That's what we've been told by the man Peter Oruk. You know, he's that journalist that hasn't gone ahead, obviously, be given um, his flowers for the good job he's doing. But I tell you, he puts in a very good shift. If I told you, obviously, follow him a lot onto his stories that he goes ahead, obviously, put up. Now, selling three Arsenal players is the plan for Arsenal. And I tell you, <clears throat> out of those three, I only doubt on one who can't be sold. That is Emily smith -Rowe. And for Rest Nelson, we all know that Arsenal just went ahead, obviously blindfold him, put pen to a long contract, and Arsenal felt like they could get good money out of him because he was living on a free. And if at all Arsenal can get some 30 million pounds, even if it's 20 or 30 million pounds, they would have gone ahead to make profit from the players they are really selling. And I think teams like Brighton are interested, and other teams are really going to show huge interest in signing this player who is called um, Rest Nelson. Limited playing time, and he knows he's young, 24 years of age. He's just one or two years left to hit his prime. He would fancy to get enough playing time. And if I'm Rest Nelson, I wouldn't be willing to see to it that I look any back, no backward looking in this game because the next season because he needs to get himself firing. We know Rest Nelson is a very good player. And for Arsenal, all what they can do is sell him to Brighton or any other team that wants him and put there either a buyback clause or a sell-on clause. I think that's what Arsenal should do for me. Then um, when we go to... Because what's the reason of putting on a buyback clause or a sell-on clause? He might erupt and become one of the best players in the Premier League and it'll be like in two seasons, we can really buy him back. If not, if you sell him, we have a 10% or 20% sell-on clause. And that player might elevate at Brighton. And you know how Brighton sells these players expensively. They can sell a player who has gone ahead to hit the ground running for two consecutive seasons for like 70, 80, 100, 120 million pounds. If he goes for like 80 million pounds, Arsenal will have close to 20 million pounds into their pocket. But for the initial sale, it was for, was for 20, 30 million pounds. That means Arsenal would have gone ahead to collect 50 million pounds from the academy graduate that is uh, Rest Nelson. And it's a huge profit because you invested zero shearing to obviously bring him into your club. Then we go to um, Nketia Eddie. For Eddie Nketia, it's obvious. You know, Kai Havertz, um, Gabriel Jesus, all are ahead of him when it comes to leading the line at Arsenal. And Arsenal are in talks to get in another centre forward at their club. <clears throat> that means they've gone ahead to really come up with a perfect plan to see to it that all goes as to plan to get in players that can easily elevate and really put in a very beautiful shift. That is it. So for him, it's no brainer. He's living. He's living because he doesn't have enough playing time. And um, last season he had some running of games. Even this season, Jesus was injured. He had some running of games. Not until when they went to Dubai and the manager came up with a new decision that Kai Havertz is going to be leading my line, which has gone ahead to pay off hugely, as we've gone ahead to see it that Kai Havertz has 13 goals in the Premier League and some good assists, and is soon making some 20 goal involvements into the Premier League only. So, if you are, if you are, a side of Edin Ketia, it's written all over the world that you're no longer needed and teams can offer like 30 to 35 million pounds. Kai Havertz has 18 goal involvements this season, 12 goals and 6 assists. That is it. In the Champions League, he has one goal. Those are 13 goals. And that is it. He's left with just um, four goal contributions, just two goal contributions in the Premier League to hit that milestone. And I know he's really going to hit it. Now, for Emily smith Rowe. This is where I really have a very huge doubt. I don't think that Arsenal are willing to sell this player. I think they are going to give him one more season and extend his contract. If not, if not, they might really send him on loan to a team that needs him to 
rekindle his blistering form that he had before he saw himself getting injured. But <clears throat> the question is going to be on either Fabio Vieira or Emily Smith Rowe. Who of those is really going to leave? Because if you get in Douglas Lewis and um, you get in Douglas Lewis and um, Bruno Gimares, obviously Emily Smith Rowe is out of contention into the starting eleven of Arsenal. The same applies to Fabio Vieira. Will Arsenal consider selling these players or they will see them loaned to see to it that they elevate their game and make a decision next summer? But this summer, I think even Fabio Vieira might really move out of that club because Arsenal might be looking in for other players to strengthen that squad. But I tell you what, it's really going to be a tricky decision onto Emily Smith Rowe because I don't see him really leaving the club of Arsenal. Although he's part of the three, but I think they can substitute him with Fabio Vieira because for Emily Smith Rowe, he's one of the fans' favorites. You know, he makes some good sell of jerseys. You get, and he might be given a chance because all what is going to hit to really fail him to obviously compete into the team and obviously get his position back it's because of one reason he has been injured and he has gone ahead to lack enough playing time because of injury and by the time he came back players like trossard had already gone ahead to establish themselves onto the left attacking side of the midfield and i tell you if emily smith Rowe was fit there is no way Arsenal would have gone ahead to think of bringing in trossard or michaelo modric but they felt like they needed a person to compete with Gabriel Martinelli and they went ahead to get in Trossard, who was going ahead to obviously look good because he now has 15 goals. He has, I think, 14 in the league. One, let's check here. <laughs> Let me be really exact. I don't want to give you poison. Let's talk about Trossard. Trossard starts this season. 11 goals in the Premier League with one assist, four goals in the Champions League, taking him to 15 and one goal in the Community Shield. Those are <coughs> 16 goals this season for Leandro Trossard. And Trossard has gone ahead to obviously pay off. So there is no way Arsenal will say we really want to see to it that this player really gets out and running. Now, Peter O'Rourke also added onto his long article that went ahead to put at the foot inside of that. <coughs> It is therefore believed that Arsenal will have to sell homegrown stars to avoid breaching profitability and sustaining roles with the more for Gimares. Academy products are considered pure profit under PSR and can be reflected as such in the club's 2023-2024 accounts if they are sold before 30th of June. Remember, Arsenal can only spend money that they made in the previous season. That is it. With them making close to 100 million pounds, you know, in the Champions League, in the Premier League, they're going to be second. I think they might get in some huge amount of money, <clears throat> like mm, between 300 million pounds in there for you will come in. You understand? When you add <clears throat> the reward revenue and the broadcasting revenue, I think they can, ha they can make close to 400 or 500 million pounds this season as income, plus they get collection. Now... <clears throat> If they obviously get in what we call the academy players, it's written and known all over the world that that is a pure profit because academy graduates just coming through because you have to balance your profit. Like for Fabio Vieira, if you bought him for 35, if you are to sell him, to register a profit out of him, you are supposed to sell him more than 35 million pounds, something I think Arsenal cannot get from him because of how he has been performing lately. So that's why they want to consider these ones up for sale. And now, he went ahead and really told us reasons as to why these three might be looking to obviously leave the club of Arsenal. Res Nelson, 24 years of age, has made just five starts across all competitions this season, despite signing a new four-year deal last summer in 2023. For Emily Smith Rowe, 23 years of age, has gained, has again struggled with injury in the 23-24 season campaign, playing just 453 minutes of action this term. Edin Ketia has hit six goals in 37 good games this term but is widely expected to be moved on with Arsenal searching for a new striker so with that limited playing time because Nketiah is 26 years of age 25 26 you need more playing time at that age and I think 
they'll be pushing to go elsewhere and obviously start performing at higher levels and i think arsenal are really gonna consider that but i know that two of those are gonna be sold only one player i'm really doubtful about that is emily smith rowey he's a darling if he can keep himself fit i think with a good preseason, he can force himself into the team of arsenal with the form that gabriel martinez has been having i tell you emily smith rowey might find himself dislodging him in the starting 11 of arsenal because he has a chance they go to the preseason. remember gabriel martinez is going to be playing into the copa america and trossard is also going to be playing in the euros so all their teams are expected to go further and by the time arsenal starts the preseason, it will be emily smith rowey who will be playing on the left forward of arsenal meaning that if he really hits the ground running the manager will be thinking of really starting him in the game starters in there for you and with arsenal going to be highly competing competing in four competitions next season i think game time won't be a problem for emily smith rowey as he can easily be played in the midfield on the left to see to it that he does the needful so we wait and see how ateta is really gonna overcome that now let's go to the reply of unai emery to um Desabhi on to why he thought his team never really showed up on the occasion he said we have to try to understand our progress and our progression we are doing a very good season enjoying europe for the first time in a long time we're in a semi-final sometimes we are making some mistakes and losing so he's like agreeing with Desabhi that the problem has always been um the injuries that have gone ahead obviously coming through and costed the side of aston villa they are playing in the they are playing in europe their squad is limited and that squad that is limited has found itself really getting injuries because if you're not having mm, konsa you are not having boba kamara uh there really is another player they've gone ahead to lose to injury and their squad is really very thin so it's hard to really match the levels of teams like brighton but even brighton is having very many injuries but the difference is brighton got knocked out of europe and they are concentrating on the premier league so that's the problem because on thursday aston villa had to play and even this week they have to play another game of football and they've gone ahead to obviously lose <coughs> the first leg against olympiakos at villa park by four goals to two now they are going to greece i think they're going to be knocked out unless otherwise they pull out a miracle but never say never for unai emery he is a very good manager and he knows how to handle situations like this because we've seen him do it into the champions league before shocking teams away from home then douglas lewis after the brighton game <clears throat> he said the most important thing is after we lose we put our heads in the same direction and we go together we can lose and we can win what is important is to get our heads up and focus on the next games so He's like, game is done. That is done business. Let's press the next button. And the next button has to call in for them focusing onto the game. They're going to be playing away. Um, them, the game they're going to be playing away from home. And that is in Olympiacos. So, all we have to understand is <clears throat> that Aston Villa is going through turmoil. And they need to obviously sign other players. And if I'm Aston Villa, why should I hesitate to keep Douglas Luiz? If Arsenal can get me 105 million pounds, I think for Aston Villa, you can use that 105 million pounds because you got him for peanuts. You can use that amount of money to really get in other players. Like one for 40, one for 30, another one for 30. To really come up and really cover up in that position of Douglas Luiz because... I know Unai Emery, he's good at that and can get him very many other players that can do that job very well. So guys, thank you very much for watching through. Tell me your thoughts about Arsenal triple sale considered. You know, academy graduates are going to be sold to really, fin to really finance the transfer of Bruno Gimares. And would you obviously agree with what the Arsenal side is really drawing up? Because these academy players, when you sell them, it's a 100% profit. To be used into that side of your summer transfer window. Unai Emery and Douglas Luiz going for Dizabi. Are they right or no? 
I sign out for now. See you later. Andrew Kan David is my name. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Guys, bye bye for now. I'm going onto the United Matters channel to put in what we call a live video. United versus Crystal Palace. A game where Manchester United is having very many injuries. Bruno Fernandes is out. Let me read you the injuries that Manchester is having. And I'm reading this with the Arsenal fans to show you that at Old Trafford, I think Man United has no chance because of the injuries. Now, Lisandro Martinez is out. <coughs> Luke Shaw is out. Terrell Malaysia is out. Veran is out. Maguire is out. Lindelof is out. You get? Um, Rashford is doubtful. Bruno Fernandes is out. Uh, Kambuala is out. We are having close to 10 injuries into the team of Man United. And if we reach Sunday this week, when we are into this state, I tell you, Arsenal will have an easy job to do as they will pass through Man United as a knife through butter. <laughs> that is it. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later. And I'll return in a giphy. Like two hours from now, I'll be here bringing you the latest news and information as far as other teams are really concerned and maybe a live later to see to it that we have a one on one discussion after that game of Man United. I'll show up on this channel to live stream with you and talk more Arsenal news. Bye bye. Those going to bed, good night.